is, is that every single block, and we have 100 of them here, gets assigned to one SM, to one stream multiprocessor. So one SM will handle one block. It can handle more than one block. It can handle up to eight blocks. But the idea is that you have these stream multiprocessors, these SMs, and let's say that, for instance, on this laptop, I have four SMs, OK? So let's say I, have, I launch this kernel. I have four SMs. Chances are that every SM will end up doing about 25 blocks, OK? It might be that some blocks, they, they end up doing more work. And it doesn't have to be partitioned like 25 per each of the four SMs here. But on average, chances are that every of those four SMs that I have will end up dealing, executing 24 blocks. Now, if you go to that uh, C1060 GPU card, that, that one has 24 SMs. Okay? So that one, if it has 24 SMs, then it means that, on average, it is about four blocks per SM. So this is, if you want, the quantum of scalability when it comes to a graphics card, how many SMs you have. Because whatever number of blocks you decide to have, 100 in this case, if you have like a really powerful graphics card, then, then those 100 blocks will get spread out to 16, or 14, or 4 here, or, or 24 on the C1060. And that's why, you know, uh, uh, that car, the powerful guard, finishes faster as compared to, to, to this car here. The important thing at the end of this short uh, discussion is that you have here, on one hand, you have on the software side, you have the block concept, and on the hardware side, you have the SM concept. And this, the, 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 the block, gets assigned for execution to one SM. Um, here is a diagram. Like a, like a picture of how things get executed. So imagine that this is your, in this box is your C code, OK? And you have here a bunch of like serial code. And at some point, you have a kernel launch. And what, what, what happens is that the host executes. And all of a sudden, the device is invoked with a certain number of blocks. So this is block 0, 0, block 1, 0, block 2, 0, and so on. And each block has a certain number of threads. This picture is a little bit misleading because it suggests that you know the execution in time flows like this. But remember, the execution is asynchronous. So actually, this is not following this. This goes here, and the execution continues on the host. Okay, <coughs> but that's that's the idea. You have C code, and in your C code, at some point, you, you invoke a kernel, and automatically that 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 kernel call gets translated into uh, a, a piece of software being run on the device, how many times? It depends on how many blocks and how many threads you specify. And this is just an example to see there is nothing magic. You know, this is your usual C code. If you really pay attention here, all of a sudden, uh, you see this call in, in, in a piece of C++ code. So there's nothing special here. Um, are there any? limitations in terms of the number of threads that you can uh, invoke in a, in a uh, block, and number of blocks that you can have in, uh, in, in, a, in a kernel call. And the, the, the answer is yes. I told you that you can have up to 512 threads in one block. Uh, they can be organized uh, in a three-dimensional fashion. If you, for instance, want to process uh, three-dimensional data, let's say that you do a finite element analysis or some type of other simulation 3D, you can have an X, Y, Z structure. So I, I have something like, let's say, 16 by 16 by 2. That would be 512. That's fair, OK? As long as 16 by times 16 times 2 gives you 512 or less than 512, you're good. Uh, number of blocks, there's a limit. Uh, you can have a two-dimensional array of blocks. And the x and y limits are basically 65,535. So effectively, you can have no more than 4 billion blocks in a call to a kernel. Now, every one of these blocks can, can have 512 threads. So that's, that's, that's 1 trillion. So you cannot execute one kernel more than 1 trillion times. 
if you want to, probably you have to break into or do some loop to invoke it. But that's that's a limitation. Um, I haven't run into that, to be honest. So uh, the question is, how much time does a kernel call? What's the overhead associated with the kernel call? You see there that there is some 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 ugly thing that does not allow synchronization at block level in the device. That means, you'll see that later, that you, if you really, really want to synchronize the computation between blocks, what you do, you go into a kernel, you execute, you come out of the kernel, and that guarantees that you know, all the blocks are executed, and then you go back in. Now, you have to do that fairly often. What is the overhead associated with, with this, uh, 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 this, this limitation in CUDA? Uh, if you if you uh, run uh, a C, uh, just a simple test on on two different graphics cards, you end up with 0 0.1 milliseconds and 0 0.08 milliseconds on two two different cards. This is if you can if you call a kernel that uh, that has no arguments. Uh, if the kernel when you call the kernel, you pass down some arguments into the into the um, um, device. Then this is the overhead. So. It's not honestly. It's like what well, is like here is like 80 microseconds. It's not that big of a deal if you have a serious computation. Um, let's talk about language support now in in CUDA. Um, it supports C. It also, as of very recently, supports Fortran. Uh, Fortran does not come from NVIDIA. CUDA comes from NVIDIA and C are supported and they support C++ now. Uh, Fortran. Uh, the Fortran support is through an ongoing project with the Portland, Portland Compiler Group. Um, I already told you that C++, C++ support is there. Uh, and how do you, how can you write code um, if you want to deal with with the device? The idea is that it's C, but it has some extensions. Okay, it has some keywords for the compiler to understand that you are now starting to define a function that will get executed on the kernel. So therefore, it needs to, to know that that piece of code gets mapped onto the, the GPU hardware and not, not on the CPU. So for instance, if you want to have a kernel, you have to have the keyword underscore underscore global uh, and void and then the name of the kernel. I, 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 pay attention to this is void, and it makes sense, right? If you launch, if you're the CPU and you launch 25,600 threads, you cannot expect to you know, get back something from them. You would get overwhelmed. So whatever they compute useful information, it has to be stored on the device, and then you fetch it back through another, uh, another call. Here, you have, for instance, if you want to have the kernel call another function that is executing also on the device, then you have this keyword device. So that, that tells the compiler that this is a function that is going to be run on the device and is going to be invoked by a kernel. Uh, and there's a CUDA reference manual that lists all the, all the uh, functions that you have in, in, uh, in CUDA, uh, all the keywords and, and such. I'm not going to spend more time. Uh, now, oh man, I'm so much behind. It's unbelievable. Uh, we're done then. <laughs> um, okay, I'll try to go faster. Um, so, who's executing stuff here? Uh, the, the stream multiple, so the SM is executing uh, um, the code, and um, my laptop here has four. I told this, uh, this Tesla has 30. Uh, the stream multiprocessor is where the block lands for execution. It has eight scale processors, the white guy, the red guys here, and it has two special two special functions. Uh, and if you, this is if you want to deal with cosines, transcendentals, and, 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 and such. Now, this one SM can handle at, at any time anywhere from one to 1,024 threads. So you see here that it has only eight eight scale processors. However, what happens is that in order to avoid data starvation, the, 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 
idea that CUDA came up with was to have redundancy in the number of threads waiting there to be executed. And we're going to talk about that 